the serious issue of the coronavirus. The first responsibility of our leaders has to be to protect the health, safety, and security of the people of Hawaii and our country. This is why we've temporarily suspended flights coming from China, and it's actually been very helpful. In order to protect the people of our country, we must now suspend flights coming from Japan and South Korea, where the virus has been spreading. It is irresponsible for our leaders to endanger the health and well being of the American people by continuing to allow travel from Japan and South Korea. Once it enters our country, it will spread like wildfire, and at that point, it'll be too late. The suspension of flights would be lifted once testing of passengers can be done at the airport prior to, the, prior to their getting on the plane. The United States should work cooperatively with other countries to ensure the manufacture and production of necessary test kits and should make them widely available throughout the United States. We need to take these actions now to protect the people of Hawaii and our country. There are major outbreaks of coronavirus in Japan, South Korea, and Italy. In Japan, all schools are closed for the next month at least. And yet, the United States is still receiving flights from all three of those countries. We have to have foresight and recognize the priority for our leaders is to ensure the safety and health and well-being of the people of my home state of Hawaii, the people of our country. And taking this step now is necessary to be able to accomplish that, because if we don't, then it's too late then the, the coronavirus may have already taken root. And again, you're looking at impact on jobs, impact on schools. Want to make a direct appeal to, to President Trump at this point uh, to break through the bureaucracy, break through the red tape that we're, we're seeing from agencies like the CDC and the FDA in order to broaden the testing criteria to make it so that anyone who has symptoms can actually get a test and to make sure that these tests are readily available, whether it's in a doctor's office, in a hospital, at our airports, uh, or even as they're doing in countries like Scotland and South Korea, have, there's a drive-through station. You can go in and get the test and be in and out in less than 10 minutes, rather than having the kind of prolonged testing that we're having now. We've got we've to get on the ball on this. President Trump, instead of going to war with Russia and Syria in order to protect the Al-Qaeda Turkish alliance, you should focus on the war against the coronavirus. President Trump. Vice President Pence, I'd like to offer a little constructive criticism. Your administration still has not stopped flights from South Korea and Japan from coming to the United States. This is a huge mistake. And Vice President Pence says that it's okay because these passengers will have their temperatures taken. But here's the problem. Most of those infected don't have fevers. I am back in Washington, D.C. and actually just left the Capitol a little bit ago where we voted on a really important piece of legislation that provides emergency funding for the coronavirus. Uh, this funding, it is a little bit over $8 billion and it's going to fund a variety of things, I think most importantly, which include uh, funding for these testing kits to make sure that they are widely available for anyone who's showing mild symptoms, anyone who needs to be tested anywhere in the country, an almost unanimous vote of support. I think there were two people who voted against it. Um, I think this is exactly what should be happening right now. People putting the well-being of our country and the American people ahead of politics and uh, making sure that, that we take action. We take action um, to help further prevent the spread of this virus. So we've got to continue to build off of this progress. There are so many questions and concerns about what more needs to be done to deal with the coronavirus. Here are some immediate steps that must be taken to slow its spread here in the United States of America. First of all, we've got to follow the lead of South Korea and China who are making it very easy and cheap or even free for anyone who is concerned, who may have possible symptoms or even very mild symptoms to get tested. Unlike here in the United States, over there, there's no requirement that you have to go to a general practitioner first, that you've got to get a prescription and then they have to get approval from the state or federal government and so on. All of this bureaucratic red tape needs to be eliminated. Those who need to get tested whether they have insurance or not, 
must be able to do so. The second thing is that there are workers who have tested positive or who have symptoms who are now being told that they should stay home from work, potentially for a long period of time. But if they're afraid that they're gonna lose their jobs and they don't have paid sick leave, they may feel that they have to go to work anyway. This is a big problem and this can be prevented with an emergency federal aid package that supports small businesses and ensures that workers who have been impacted by the coronavirus, that they will have paid sick leave and they will not lose their jobs. I want you to know something, that through all of our challenges, I want you to know that I hear you and that I'm here with you and I know how troubling these times are for our great nation. I know how easy it is to turn on the news, how easy it is to get sucked into the fear and the darkness and the toxicity and divisiveness and even the hopelessness. But through all of this, I really want you to remember this one thing, that all of these challenges that we face together, they have one thing in common. They require solutions. They require a global solution. They require leadership with the foresight to know that foreign policy is inseparable from domestic policy. They require a leader that understands people need to come before partisan politics. That's why I'm running for president. That's why I am still in this. And that's why I'm so incredibly grateful to every single one of you, to the hundreds and thousands of you who are part of our grassroots campaign. When we stand together as Americans and we work together with other countries in a spirit of cooperation instead of confrontation. The challenges are great. There are many ahead of us, but we have to know that when we stand together, working side by side as Americans, we can accomplish anything. First, it is critical that this issue does not become politicized. We are all in this together. These are the two things that are needed right now. Tests need to be available. People need to be taking those tests and need to know that they're not going to have to pay for them. The other step that needs to be taken is that cruise ships should not be allowed to dock in Hawaii or any other state. These, these cruise ships are basically floating incubators for this disease. Now is the time for action to provide direct assistance and emergency relief to every single American through a universal basic payment of $1,000 a month to every American for the duration of this crisis. Uh, yesterday, I introduced a resolution pushing for this emergency aid in the House of Representatives that would directly help those individuals and families who are working hard, who are struggling to make ends meet, uh, who are fearful of losing their jobs, or wondering, given all of the uncertainty, maybe how they're gonna pay the rent, how they're gonna buy food or medicine or prepare for what could end up being a two week or longer uh, quarantine situation if you get sick. A lot, of, a lot of the uncertainty around this needs to be laid to rest. This universal basic payment is the simplest, most direct way to help every American weather this storm. We have to prioritize the American people so that this economic relief is placed directly into their hands rather than getting stuck in bureaucracy or ending up uh, in the pockets of big corporations. This is the change that we're pushing for here today. Let your member of Congress know why this is important.